Hello everyone, this is Maki. We've got the second trailer for Monster Hunter Wilds during the Summer Game Fest, and I'll be sharing with you my thoughts on what was shown in the video, as well as other information outside of the trailer that you don't want to miss out on. Now, before we proceed with the video, I'd like to mention, during the Summer Game Fest, they've confirmed that Monster Hunter Wilds will have crossplay all across platforms, which is absolutely amazing. We've been begging for Capcom to have this feature in the previous Monster Hunter games, and I'm glad they finally did it. Anyhow, let's talk about the second trailer. The trailer continues where we left off. During the first Monster Hunter Wilds trailer, we were assigned to the Forbidden Lands Research Commission to help investigate the unexplored region. As we entered the Windward Plains, the mysterious boy named Nata and the research commission encountered a pack of sand leviathans. According to the English Monster Hunter website, the sand leviathans are called Balahara. It's a new sand leviathan class monster introduced in Monster Hunter Wilds. Balahara, desert-dwelling leviathans that use their supple, serpentine bodies to create quicksand traps for unwary prey. Covered in slick substance, Balahara slither through the jagged landscape with ease, burrowing through the soft sand and coiling around the environment. We actually saw a glimpse of this mysterious leviathan during the first Monster Hunter Wilds trailer. While we were in a sandstorm, running away from the herd of Doshagumas, a sand pit had formed swallowing all of the Doshaguma, and another monster popped out of that sand pit. The mysterious monster suddenly coiled onto the Doshaguma that was chasing after us. At first, it was hard to tell what the monster looked like, and now I'm glad they finally showed us what this monster really looks like in the second trailer. One of the things I've noticed about this monster was when I saw it for the first time, the appearance of this monster looked hideous. The mouth of this monster reminds me of the Narc Harkos from Monster Hunter Generations and Guy's Magorm from Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. If you think about it, both of those monsters have this bluish glowing hue in their body, like what's on the mouth of the Balahara. Anyhow, so far with these two trailers of Monster Hunter Wilds, the appearance of the large monsters looks ugly. And I mean that in a good way. Because of this uncanny alien-like appearance of these monsters, it gives off a vibe of exploring an unknown and harsh environment. These monsters had lived in this harsh place for so long that they had evolved to adapt to their situation. Like what's mentioned on the website of Monster Hunter, a world with an ever-changing climate. Life here was learned to adapt to the harsh environments, the wildlife, developing its own ecosystem, and the humans developing their own culture within it. Uh, over there! In the next scene, while we were exploring the Windward Plains, our palico points out an unknown character from a distance that was under attack by the Balahara. Quickly, we joined in and tried to help the unknown character. I kind of speculate where this unknown character is from. They may not be familiar or used to hunting monsters. On the other hand, maybe he just doesn't want to engage in a hunt because he doesn't have like a proper weapon. We need to shake them off. Follow me. Jump. Here it comes. Anyhow. While traversing through the sand, back with Balaharas that are chasing us. Overall, I already like what I'm seeing here. It's pretty much what we've already seen from the first trailer, how we were being chased by a pack of Doshagumas, and this is the type of gameplay that I missed so much in Monster Hunter. It reminded me of the time when I played Monster Hunter 2 for the first time. I had a difficult time hunting the large monster because all of the other small monsters were still in the area. These small monsters would chip away my health bar, some even would ruin my openings while attacking the target monster, and many more. 
This type of scenario during hunts gave me another layer of immersion when hunting monsters. The setting of the hunt made me feel that I don't really belong in this place and the odds are against me. Therefore, I have to create a way to successfully pivot this scenario in my favor, which is killing the monsters around me before the main target monster. You get what I mean, right? Monster Hunter Wilds is reintroducing this again, which I really like. I'm sure this type of hunting dynamic may come off as awkward or annoying to some, but I'm sure some people will eventually like this kind of hunting experience. But of course, what are your thoughts on this style of hunting in Monster Hunter? Let me know in the comments. Make it to the rocks, we may lose them! Moving on in the next part, we ended up falling into the sand pit trap of the monster. Then, the hunt began seamlessly. In this next part, we see the Balaharas coiling onto the rock pillar, which I find interesting. I wonder how the rest of the monsters are going to interact with the environment. Moving on to the next part, we see our hunter positioning itself safely while the Doshaguma and the pack of Balaharas are having a turf war with the monster. And this next part is really exciting. We get to see this new monster, this new mysterious electric monster. When I saw this monster for the first time, it looked like the flying Zenogre because of its head shape. あの、最初の段階、二足歩行で立ってましたからね。当初はそういう風なネタとかもありましたね。And <笑> some people even say that this looks like a Shigaru Magala, and some say it's like a different species of Seregios. Lots of wild ideas here, but what were your thoughts on it when you saw this monster for the first time? Anyhow, we see this mysterious monster taking a stance and charging up electricity from its body. In the next scene, we see this mysterious monster flying or gliding in the air and then the monster fires a devastating railgun-like attack towards the Doshaguma. Next. We get to see Nata running towards what I assume to be his village or Maybe it's the village of the unknown character we helped out early in the video. I speculate that the people in this village had built those lightning rod towers all across the windward plains to protect themselves from the sand tide. This is what the sandstorm is called whenever there's a violent sandstorm rife with lightning. Anyhow, the village was under attack by a Doshaguma, and the village people were all out panicking, running away from the monster. Don't worry, the hunter is here. Just watch, you'll see what hunting is all about. Moreover, we get to see Alma comforting Nata by reassuring him everything will be okay. And there we have it. That's the end of the second trailer. Overall, the second trailer is a bit more cinematic than the first trailer. From what I've noticed, they're trying to shift the focus this time around onto presenting the story of the game, besides just showcasing the gameplay. The development team is working to craft a story unlike anything seen before in the Monster Hunter series, blending a compelling and intriguing narrative with interesting characters to meet during your journey. Probably we'll get more gameplay in the next trailer of Monster Hunter Wilds. They did announce Monster Hunter Wilds will make a return and be playable for the first time this August at Gamescom 2024 in Cologne, Germany. We'll just have to wait for what else they have to share around that time. That's all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching.